Hello students, in the previous video lecture, we have discussed about microphones, headphones and loudspeakers from unit 1 and in our today's video lecture, we are going to see the remaining topic in first unit that is acoustics as well as stereo system. After completing these two topics in the first unit, then we are going to move on to second unit communication and computer gadgets in which we are going to discuss fuzzy mail machines. First, we will discuss about indoor acoustics. The variety of situations that can be encountered indoor is virtually infinite. Studies in acoustics have established certain ideal characteristics according to building size and the purpose or kind of sound that will make up program. At best, these provides only guidelines. The ultimate sound reproduced is a quite complex wave system propagated through space. In any indoor installation, every listener or member of the audience should hear first a direct sound at every component frequency and then an appropriate amount of reverberation or reinforcement of same complex sound. If there is no reverberation, reinforcement the sound seems unnatural. If there is too much of the direct sound, it is not strong enough to be intelligible. Reverberation happens whenever you do, sometimes as in studio, structural or deconstructive design can be used to adjust its amount to better suit the purpose of the sound system. But more often, especially in home, high fidelity and stereo installations, the owner just wants to put the system in his room. He or she is not about to redesign his room to suit the system. So we have to accept the room as it is and find a way of achieving a good reproductive illusion in that environment. In the living room kind of environment, it seems as if nature is on our side. For smaller rooms, the smaller speaker seems to be a better job, while for larger rooms, the larger enclosures such as corner horns are better. But in case of large installations, there are more factors which affects the acoustics. In the home system, room acoustics varies considerably. Some rooms are carpeted, wall to wall, perhaps the windows are adorned with heavy drafts and the condition is further augmented with an acoustic tile ceiling and plenty of well-stuffed furnitures. Such a room is relatively dead acoustical. If you talk, the room gives the impression of being nice and quiet. At the other end of the spectrum is the empty room or one of the sound the way. The floor may be made up of tile or wood, the walls, plasters are pencilled with a hard finish and the ceiling completely non-absorbent. The furniture may be devoid of unploister such as the rough iron frame type with clothes draped over it like a sling. Such a room is acoustically live. If a number of people are holding simultaneous conversation in such a room, the effect can become quite nerve wracking For reproduced sound, each kind of room needs its own treatment for which different kind of speaker systems are suited. The reason why speaker size should be suited to room size, apart from the fact that the customer will usually prefer it the way is the speaker tend to generate sound waves consumerate with their physical size. Of course, every frequency has its corresponding wavelength and the speaker must have some way of developing waves of each wavelength in the audio spectrum. Large speakers require more space to develop the wave, particularly the lower frequency one 
than the smaller speakers. Consequently, placing a large speaker in a relative small room may not give the wave space to develop as the speaker designer intended. This is particularly true for corner horns and to lesser degree of bass reflex system. Now, let us discuss about the stereo systems. At most home, high fidelity systems are not stereo. We will devote this section directly to achieve the best stereo illusion in different types of rooms. For the medium to dead type of room with plenty of absorptive surface, the conventional stereo placement is best. Two speakers are placed apart so that their separate program content can be clearly heard through most of the room. In conventional rectangular room, the speaker should be placed either in the corner at opposite extremities of one another of the short wall or a little way in the form of corners along one of the longer way as shown in the figure as shown in this figure. But in rectangular room, an appropriate axis of symmetry could run from corner to corner. But in rectangular room, an appropriate axis of symmetry could run from corner to corner, a similar diagonal. Putting the speaker on appropriate mid side gives a whole range of new possible for stereo placement. Rooms with L shapes or other deviations from the simple rectangular pose a different kind of problem. But usually the simplest concept is to think of the shape as modified rectangle. The basic rectangle on which you base your notation of providing stereo may be part of the whole room or more than the whole room. For example, if the dining area is relatively a small area added onto the living room as shown in the figure. That is, I have shown a figure over here. So, if the dining area is relatively small area, add on to the living room and people will not normally listen to stereo while dining or will only treat it as a incidental music if they do. The best approach is to ignore the existence of the dining area as it is being shown in the dotted lines over here. The fact that some of the sound from one side more than the other of the stereo will spill over into the dining area may require a slight balance adjustment of the stereo control. So the balance seems correct. On the other hand, some L-shaped rooms could be more accurately approximated as a large rectangle from which a small area is being removed as shown in this figure. This is particularly true where the remaining area happens to be kitchen which is only separated from the living dining area by a countertop rather than a complete wall. In either of these cases, it would be easier to consider that you are aiming to serve the entire large rectangular area with stereo. When the room is far more live as in the average recreation room without carpet, draps or acoustic tile ceilings or with only some of this conventional treatment as suggested in the example, what we can do is in the dead rooms, the aim is to serve the entire listening area with sound direct from both loudspeakers. If sound does not reach the listeners directly, 
it is apt to be lost so sitting in a position where only one speaker can be heard will lose the stereo illusion but in the living room reflection turn to be destroy the illusion if this approach is used so the technique in a living room is to utilize the reflection since you cannot easily get rid of them one way to do this is to use a cabinet type stereo with speaker on the end of the cabinet as shown in the diagram another technique that works well when with this kind of room is although it is not confident to this type is the so called dipole or planar type speaker dipole or planar type speaker all the speakers we have discussed to this point radiates what is basically a sound pressure wave and the point where this wave enters the room identifies the sound source from each channel the dipole speaker does not work in the same way the back is completely open so that when the front pushes a sound compression out the back sucks a sound refraction in listening to one of the speaker on monochromic program as you walk around it the back and front do not sound too different from conventional speakers but when you get edge on the location of the speaker suddenly seems to vanish you suddenly get the impression that the thing you re looking on as a speaker is not working and the sound must really be coming from somewhere else if two of these are used as stereo one for each channel and placed in a manner somewhat like the shown in this figure what happens is that in a completely new type of listening situation results now in either end of the room the stereo illusion is as good as it would be with the other type similarly placed but facing only towards you if you use two for each channel back to back in a highly reflecting room you would get too much reflection from one face away from you via the far end of the room but with dipole speakers placed like that in a in this particular figure not only do you get a good stereo illusion in both end of the room it is also good immediately between the speakers although you would not identify the source of sound with the speaker however you do get the separation because of the interaction between the different program content in two channels so that's all with unit 1 now let us discuss about unit 2 the first topic for our discussion in unit 2 is phasimile in addition to basic signals consisting of speech music or telegraphic codes a telecommunication system is often required to transmit signals of a visual nature phasimile means a extra exact reproduction and in phasimile transmission an exact reproduction of a document or picture is provided at the receiving end televisions means visually at a distance and a television system is used to reproduce any scene at the receiving end it differs from phasimile in that the scene may be live information is transmitted at a much faster rate in television transmission that it is in phasimile transmission as a result television transmission requires a much large bandwidth and special ba wide band circuitry are required the small bandwidth required for phasimile makes it suitable for transmission over normal telephone lines an input scanner can be used to transmit image over a telecommunication link to a remote printer this principle has been in use commercially for news photographic transmission since 1930 combined sending of pictures and receiving machines suitable for office use becomes 
widely available 1960s and between 1980s and 87s. The number of machines connected to the worldwide telephone network grew from a quarter of millions to two millions. Fesimal provides very fast transmission of almost any documentary material without specialist preparation. However, between 2 million and 10 million bytes are required for a raster scan of a A4 page. This has to be compared with 20,000 bits for a similar sized page of ASCII code character. This added transmission burden is somewhat have elevated by the ability to tolerate very high error rate. The design of Fezimile machines has been strongly influenced by the use of public switching telephone network. Firstly, the network was designed for speech, not for data. Therefore, the power, frequency, time characteristics of the transmitted Fezimile signal must be chosen to suit the network. Secondly, Transmission time is expensive, so effective data compression and channel modulation methods must be used. Thirdly, since the public network is switched, every facimile machine can in principle be connected to every other. Rigorous development and application of international standards is therefore necessary to ensure that this potential for interconnection is not wasted. Basic fax machine operations. Essentially, a fax machine scans original documents, convert the scanned image into electrical signal and transmit them over telephone lines to a receiving fax machine. The receiving fax machine, in turn, converts the received signal back into the graphical image of the original document and print them. Let us discuss about the block diagram of fax machine and the operation of each blocks in the fax machine. First, let us discuss about the handshake process. The sending and receiving fax modem set up the transmission protocol, transmission speed and other setting between them in a handshaking process. If one modem cannot transmit at the highest speed of the other, both modems agree to fall back to the next highest speed at which both modems can transmit on the line. At the transmitting end, the first thing will be a scanner. The image on the page are scanned and transformed into analog signals to begin the transmission process. Either a charge coupled device or contact image sensor scanner scans the page being sent. A photo sensor array of 1728 tiny sensors for A4 page size targets very small picture elements on a line of page, one sensor per pixel results in 1728 bits per line. The array determines whether each pixel is black or white and accordingly generates a strong or weak electronic signal for the pixel. A page is scanned line by line with all the pixels in a tiny strip from 0.13 to 0.25 mm high across the top of the page or between 10 to 12 scan lines per line of text. Successive strips are scanned until the whole page is converted into a series of electrical pulses. The amplitude of each pulse represents the brightness of the corresponding pixel. This scanning operation takes place 5 and 10 seconds per page. Next block is nothing but of analog to digital converter. After scanning, it is being sent to the analog to digital converter. The scanner signals are converted from analog to digital with plenty with typically from 1 to 6 bits per pixel. After image processing is complete, 1 bit per pixel is produced. The processing of the scanner data can be 
done on the analog scanner signal, the digital data or both. It accommodates for the shading, distortion and other aspects of the original image so that produce production can be as accurate as possible. So these things will happen in the video processing. After that, it will be given to the shading compensation check. The shading compensation checks for non-uniformity in the scanner optical system and corrects the distortion due to both light source as well as non-uniformity in the scanner elements. Next to soft thresholding, the conversion of the scanner output from gray level to black and white level must be performed. It may include deterring a method of generating pseudo gray scales. Other video processing technique includes automatic background connection, automatic contrast control, age enhancement, modulation transfer function that is MTF, then these can be performed in one or two dimension. Image may also be reduced or enlarged. Next is nothing but of compressing the digital signal. The data compression operation can be reduce the picture information by a factor of from 5 to 20 depending on the characteristics of the image. This operation generates code word containing the pixel information in compressed digital signal. After that, it is being given to the modulation. The compressed digital signals are modulated by the modem into analog signal that can be sent over regular telephone line. Group 3 fax machine or half duplex and can either send or receive at a time. The analog signals are then transmitted over the phone line for sending, for sending modem to receive the modem signal. At the receiving end, there will be a demodulator. A modem demodulates or decodes the received analog tone signal regenerating the digital signal which is being sent. Then it will be given to the decompression. The next step is to expand the digital signal and reconstruct the page's image into black and white pixels which represent the picture of the page's image. After that, it will be sent to the thermal printer. The thermal printer converts the expanded bit stream into a copy of the original page. The printer writes or spaced 203 to inches, touching the temperature sensitive recording paper. For black marking, the wire heats up when heat current passes through them. The wire goes from non-marking that is white to marking temperature and back again in a few milliseconds. Standard resolution is 203 lines per inches across 98 lines per inches down the page. Fine resolution requires twice the number of lines down the page. Most group 3 fax machines include a high resolution option. So that's all with today's video lecture. See you all in the next video lecture. Thank you.